Hey, what's going on, guys? The Podfather here. Uh, gonna bring a new segment to you guys. We're gonna do all. It's gonna be on the show as well as here. Um, we're gonna do top five lists for sports. It could be anything: football, hockey, baseball, basketball, college, everything. It can be whatever. But top five lists, you know, because I think top tens are just too long. We're gonna do top five, narrow it down to five. Um, please remember to like and subscribe this video. Comment on it and tell me what other top five lists you would like me and the show to do and we will do it and we will throw your name out there if you gave us the idea. Uh, rem like I said, remember like and subscribe to the video. Also, don't forget about the blog, biggerandbettersportsblog.wordpress.com and don't forget to check us out on Twitter. I am at TinoBucci33 and Bradder is at Defense12Brad. Uh, yeah, like I said, we're going to do top a top five list here. Uh, the first one that we're ever going to do, um, it is February 15th, 2018, and I am sitting at my desk, sort of. And uh, like I said, we're going to do top five list here. We're going to do the top five worst BCS Bowl teams. So pretty much a team that was, I would say their performance in the bowl. You know, they already earned their spot, but... When they came to the BCS Bowl, did not play well. And uh, like I said, we're going to go from number five, the fifth worst, to the worst worst. Um, and uh, if you guys don't remember, the BCS was pretty much a computer that chose the, the national championship and five or six bowl games from New Year's Eve to the actual national championship game. There was no college football playoff, but I think the BCS was the reason the college football playoff was initiated because some teams were getting in there just because they were in a weak conference, you know, not like a TCU or Utah back then, but more like a Ohio State or a um, Oklahoma, you know, stuff like that. They're in the Big Five Conference, and one of the Big Five Conferences wasn't that good. And they would run the table, and then they'd go face someone else from a tougher conference and get the pants knocked off of them. So, like I said, I mean, we're going to go through the top five worst BCS Bowl performances, but I think the worst thing was the actual BCS. But, you know, that's for another day and another show. Um, so we're going to go through it. We're going to go, like I said, from the fifth worst to the worst worst. Um, and we're going to start out first with a team that I used to root for, uh, the Notre Dame Fighting Irish in the 2001 Fiesta Bowl. They faced Oregon State, the Beavers, and they were, the Notre Dame was ranked number 11 in the BCS, and they got beat 41-9, 41-9. Uh, it was the sixth worst, worst loss by a Notre Dame team since 1946. Obviously, uh, the coach was Tyrone Willingham, and they were more of a running team. They averaged about 350 yards, but 200 of it was rushing. So, what do they do in this game? 155 total yards and 17 rushing. Didn't really show up there. And kind of a you know weird thing here is that Oregon State had 18 penalties for 174 yards and still beat Notre Dame by 32. Just not a good showing by the Fighting Irish there. I was probably sitting in my basement watching it and probably got bored after halftime. So, like I said, number five is the 2001 Notre Dame Fighting Irish in the Fiesta Bowl. Number two is, no, number four, I'm sorry, number four is Nebraska in the 2002 Rose Bowl, which was the national championship for that year. If you all remember, the bowls changed, like the national championship between the Rose Bowl, Orange Bowl, Cotton Bowl, all those sort of bowls. This year was the Rose Bowl, and it had Nebraska versus Miami. And um, Nebraska was number two in the BCS. They had a Heisman winner. But they kind of stumbled coming into this game. They were beaten. This is this is very. I don't remember this, but they were beaten sixty-two to thirty-six by Colorado in the Big Twelve championship game. So they lose by almost thirty points, and the BCS still puts them in against Miami. And what happens? Thirty-four to thirty-seven to fourteen. Miami kills them. It was during the Larry Coker era, and those teams were stacked. 
I don't think any team would have really performed against them, but I think it was a horrible performance because they had a Heisman winner. Eric Crouch won the Heisman Trophy, and he was terrible. He only had 176 total yards. And uh, another thing here, Miami was up 34 to nothing at halftime. So it was just just a horrible BCS game. I mean, like I said, number four, Nebraska, 2002 Rose Bowl versus the Miami Hurricanes. Number three, this was an interesting one, and I forgot about this, but it, it's hilarious to think about. But this one is Alabama in the 2009 Sugar Bowl. Yes, on my top five list, I have a Nick Saban coached Alabama team on worst BCS Bowl performances. They were a 10-point favorite against Utah. Utah was up 21 to nothing in the first quarter. Bama allowed 336 yards passing to a guy that didn't even play in the NFL. And Alabama had just lost to Florida and Tim Tebow in the national championship. So in a way, you kind of think Alabama really didn't, you know, they didn't really like this game. They weren't really looking into it. They weren't really looking forward to it. I mean, you can't you can't call up the NCAA and say, hey, we don't want to play in this game. We just got the crap kicked out of us by another team. We're pretty embarrassed. We were number one at one point. So why don't you just let us get a, you know, the rest of the year off. We'll just take the rest of the year off. And the BCS comes back and gives them a favorable matchup against Utah. They were a 10-point favorite. And like I said, they allowed 336 yards passing. I think that's the only time Nick Saban has given up over 330 yards passing ever to a, to another team as an Alabama coach. I may be wrong. Well, no, Deshaun Watson. But still, Deshaun Watson is going to turn into a superstar. This is guy is from Utah. Never heard of him. Don't know who he is, and I usually know who the people are. I had no idea who this guy was. Um, and this was another stat that, you know, was weird. Alabama only had 31 yards rushing the whole game. You don't hear that much in uh, Alabama now. But, hey, the next year they won a national championship, so what was wrong with this team? It, they just didn't care. So that's why it's a horrible BCS Bowl performance because they didn't even show up. I mean, 10-point favorite, that, that should have been a cakewalk for the Crimson Tide. But, no, the Utah Utes came in and kicked the crap out of them. So, like I said, Alabama, 2009 Sugar Bowl versus Utah. All right, number two, Ohio State versus Florida in the 2007 National Championship. Ohio State was a seven-point favorite. They had the Heisman winner and in Troy Smith, and they were a seven-point favorite. And they got the crap kicked out of them by Alabama, or by Florida. It, it was something like 42-14 to 14 or something like that, but... The crazy thing is, is that that game started off with a Ted Ginn 93-yard kickoff return for a touchdown. So they were up 7-0, and then they lost 41-7 to the rest of the game. It was 41-14. to Like I said, Heisman winner, 7-point favorite, and the number two defense in the country. Not in the Big Ten, not in the Power Five. Out of 136 teams, they were number two. And they got beat 41 to 14. Embarrassing. Embarrassing. Here's 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 the big thing about that game. I never liked Ohio State in that game anyway, because I, I, I like the Big Ten, but I'm not a big fan of them. I'm not a big fan of them playing in big games. I just think whenever they play an SEC team, they don't play well. If if a in my opinion, if an SEC team plays a Big Ten team, and the Big Ten team is ranked higher than the SEC team, I still think the SEC team should win. If the Big Ten team wins, it's an upset. I'm talking about with the higher tier. I'm not talking about Vanderbilt versus Indiana or Kentucky or Kansas versus Purdue. I'm talking about if Ohio State 
played Alabama right now, or well, it did happen, but usually, you, you know, you put up, let's say, Georgia versus Ohio State. If Ohio State wins this that game, I would be surprised. That's how much I think the Big Ten is is not good. I just think it's all defense and gimmick, not gimmick offenses, but more the the pro style type offenses that doesn't produce any pro quarterbacks except for like Tom Brady. But I know that's the greatest quarterback. But still, we're getting off subject here. Ohio State versus Florida. Troy Smith, number two defense in the country. Gators outscore them 41-7 to for the rest of the game, even though they ran a touchdown back, Ohio State did. Troy Smith was 4 for 14 for 35 yards. The whole game, 35 yards and an interception, and he had negative 29 yards rushing. That is pretty embarrassing for winning a Heisman Trophy. You pretty much he had six total yards. Quarterback played the whole game, six total yards. Horrible performance. I mean, you could single that out as one of the worst performances in a BCS game, but I'm going with the whole team here. The whole team played like crap. And, you know, you look at the stats and you say, how was he 4 for 14 with 35 yards and negative 29 rushing yards? How did he only throw the ball 14 times in, you know, in a catch up mode? Well, Florida had 370 yards, and they held the ball for almost 42 minutes of the 60 minutes. So it had to be very boring to watch because it was a lot of run, 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 touchdown, run, 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 touchdown. So not very fun for BCS or for you know fans to watch, but they just held on to the ball and scored every time pretty much. I didn't really look at to see if they scored on every possession, but pretty much they just held the ball and scored. And then Troy Smith throw an, would throw an interception, incompletions, just terrible. Troy Smith never thought he was that good. I mean, he was a good college quarterback, but I knew he wouldn't uh, he wouldn't go any farther than the you know than the college ranks. Um, you know, I've always been like this, and I hate to say it, but you know, I think the Heisman should be not only the best college player but someone who's going to develop into a good NFL player because it would be good marketing to have Heisman winners in the NFL and recently it's happened but you look back Troy Smith, Eric uh, Crouch, Jason White, uh, Chris Winkie, all those guys Heisman winners did nothing in the NFL nothing so like I said I think it should be more about if his game's going to transition into the next level. But whatever. That's another subject for another time. Um, number one, the grand shitty of them all was Oklahoma in the 2005 Orange Bowl versus USC. They were number two in the BCS. Their quarterback won the Heisman. And they lost 55-19. In a national championship, they let up 50 points. Not good. Not good at all. Um, They won the Big 12 championship 42-3 against Colorado. So people said their defense stepped up. Maybe they'll do good against, you know, USC, who had Matt Leinert, Reggie Bush, Lendell White, Dwayne Jarrett, Steve Smith. Um, You know, I can't even say the defensive players. That was probably Clay Matthews, Keith Rivers, Brian Cushing, um, Taylor Mays. The list could go on and on with those teams. But what we're focusing on is the Oklahoma team here who got beat 55-9 in a national championship. USC USC was winning 38-10 at halftime. Oklahoma committed five turnovers, including three picks from their Heisman winning quarterback, Jason White. Liner, they allowed Leinert to throw for 332 yards and five touchdowns. Obviously, the next year, Matt Leinert would win the Heisman, but st- or no, Matt Leinert won the Heisman that year. Jason White won it the year before, but still, one of the few times a Heisman winner performs in a national championship. Congrats to you, Matt Leinert. I salute you on that one. But the other thing that stood out for me on that one was at one point, USC led 55-10. to 
it's pretty embarrassing when U.S. when another team in a national championship is allowed to play reserves, and that's what happened in the fourth quarter. A lot of reserves played, and you know when you have Joe Schmo coming in playing safety, the only time he's ever gotten playing time, and he's a senior in a national championship. You know you didn't show up. So yeah, number one is Oklahoma, 2005 Orange Bowl versus USC. Obviously, these, you know, that's the end of the list. That's number one. But obviously, I'm not making fun of these teams. I'm just being honest about it. And just like I said, I mean, these teams, it was more. The BCS screwed up the matchups. But these teams just didn't show up. They had months, a month to get ready for these games. And they still got killed. So, congratulations to the five teams that I picked. Like I said, don't forget to, to subscribe and like on this page. Uh, remember the blog, biggerandbettersportsblog.wordpress.com. And we're on Twitter at, at @tinobucci33 and at Defense12Brad. All right, guys, we'll come back at you. Recording the show tomorrow night and more top five lists to come. Thanks, guys.